What's going on there, Mr. Moustache? <laughs> no shave November, bro. Men's Looks prostate. like you shaved right here, though. I shaved all this. I just love this. Just gotta leave your stash, bro. <laughs> It's a, it's a conversation piece. I look like Johnny Depp, right? I don't know. Well, it's time. I'm headed out of the neighborhood. Look out, squirrel. And I'm headed up to the mountain. We're going to pour the footings today. It's about 6.50 in the morning. For some reason, concrete guys like to pour concrete super early. And we just missed, like, the hurricane that came through. So I hope the footings aren't a pond when I get there. If they are, I don't, I don't know what we're gonna do, but we have to pour the concrete. Once you order the concrete, you can't send it back in the truck like you bought it. So, that's not bad. It's not bad, I like it. Ski resort. Well, look who beat me here this morning. Somebody that wanted to shovel worse than I did. <laughs> Yeah. So the footings are a little mucky in places. A little bit. Right there, we're gonna slop that out. We did have three inches of rain. Was in it one three day. inches? I think so. Wow. It, I know it rained. I woke up and I heard it. Yep. So yeah, down there a little <laughs> Not bit. Bad. All right, I'm gonna grab a shovel. What you got there? Oh <laughs> me? Oh, I just got this handy shovel I stole out of my kid's <laughs> sand bag. I guess beach. that's the only thing that's going to get between the steel. Well, you know, it's working out pretty good. I mean, you know, I'm taking care of business, really, is what it comes down to. So these guys are going to pump it in really close to right at the top of our grade pegs. Then these guys are going to jig it with the rakes and rake it around until it's right flush. We want to get exactly flush to our pins right there. That way you know the, the whole footing will be perfectly level for laying block. And uh, that'll be real nice. Shake and bake, use a rake. Yeah. So I've done a lot of footings without the pump truck. You just have to put some logs or something on one side of the footing, back the concrete truck in to do the back part with the chute, and then you drive the concrete truck out, take the logs or block or whatever out of your footings, shape it back up and pour that section of footing. And this is a lot easier because they can get everywhere, place the concrete perfectly, and you don't have to run across your footings with a huge truck. So. This is way easier if you can afford it. It's probably about 500 bucks for the pumper today. Rodrigo's the man, he's got the controller. Hey, put some football on for us, can you? We're putting this concrete in at about a 5.5 slump. That's a measure of how much the concrete slumps. <laughs> right. If you start from 10, like 10 inches, you put it in a cone, then you take the cone off, it slumps down that much. So, we a little low back here. That's how yet. they measure that. Now, some people would say I'm crazy for doing this, but I use this aluminum screed board to kind of jig up and down and get the surface level. So I take out any humps and also take out any dips. Since I'm going to be the block mason, I don't want to have to fight a humpy footer. This just ensures that it's much more flat.
got those boots broke in. Yep. Well, that's one way to do it. <laughs> Didn't take long. Nope. You'll notice we're leaving the front section for last. We did all around the back. And we're going to let the guys with the pump go. The second truck that shows up with our second load of concrete can reach the whole front and all these piers from the chute. They can just back in here. We'll have to move our truck. That way they can go and we don't have to pay them the pump the last couple yards as well. Oh, I'm gonna get the uh, when you guys shoot the foam thing through the through the pipe. That's exciting. Yeah, yeah. Hang on. <laughs> Woo! Sun's coming out. We got a shuffle trucks here to get the second truck down the hill. Uh, wow, he's really close to my truck. All right. Thank you, man. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. Thank you, man. Thank you. See ya. Concrete trucks are huge, by the way. That's as high as I can reach. Nice job, Bob. Jason's got the hand signals going. What, what's that one, Jay? Just a little bit. Just a little bit. What other ones you got? Don't confuse them, though. That's stop. Yeah. That means I'm going to put you. <laughs> he was asking me questions about the signals. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Crossing up the signals here. Just take a little, just a little bit. All right, that one's roll. That one's roll it. Roll it. Roll it. Roll Important it. to know. Hear that noise? Hear the? Hear that rock sound? Like there's gravel. That means he's out. And that means this was probably the most perfect I've ever figured concrete. It was exactly 10 yards, and it is exactly <laughs> to the top of the grade stake in the last pier. I'm telling you, I've never figured concrete that close. Usually, we like throw away $300 of concrete. Or like we have a couple piers that aren't done, we have to pour them later, like when the slab goes in. So, ew, I'm super pumped. Beautiful. That's a thing of beauty. Thing of beauty, boys. I think you. I think you got it. Let's take a moment to thank our sponsor for this video, Surfshark. Surfshark lets you shield your online presence by encrypting your personal information and protects you from targeted ads. You know, like when the one thing you just searched on your browser pops up in your Facebook feed five minutes later. Super creepy. You can even avoid price discrimination on plane tickets and other accommodations. Surfshark also allows you to watch blocked Netflix content from other countries, like I can watch The Hobbit in the USA. They offer a 30-day money-back guarantee and is very affordable, especially if you use the promo code in the description, which gets you 85% off plus an extra three months free, which is the best price on the market. How's the blood sugar doing today? Uh, fine, I think. Better? I noticed from watching the videos last time you were starting to slur a little bit. Was I really? Mm-hmm. When it was super low. That's what they say happens. You were. Yeah. Like, either Ray is hammered <laughs> or his blood sugar is actually low. <laughs> So the concrete is in the footings and it's drying. The next thing we're gonna do is set up our speed poles, which are these guys. And we've gotten some flack on this before. Like we're not real block masons. Well, we're not real block masons, we're carpenters. And these things help us to lay the block faster, more accurate and easier. So we're gonna go ahead and set these at all the corners of our foundation, plumb them up and brace them off. And we're gonna show you how we do that. First step of these speed poles is to just set them on the footing to the outside of our corner. And that way, when we run our string lines on the inside of this, it will basically go right back where these string lines are, but at all different heights of our block rows. And this concrete's still a little green, but we're just gonna run some Tapcon screws into the green concrete, it'll hold it. Then we're gonna brace the top with some clamps and some stakes. And we got a wattboard set up. What's up? Yo, what's up there? Right here. 
and I think I can, yep. Here's a look at the top where we've got these clamp, this clamping to the inside of this two inch square piece of steel to our brace. And we'll punch a stake in the ground right here. We got a magnetic level here. It's got magnets on it. Ray's gonna clip that on the side. We'll do this way first, Ray. There you go. You like it. You love it? Now we're ready to shoot the grade and we're going to put marks on all these at eight inch increments completely level with one another to pull our string lines to for laying the block. It's going to make it super easy. <laughs> yeah, we've got our giant laser stand here. Voila. Our laser is in float mode, which is unlock. If you look over here, there's lock and unlock. That means it's self leveling, which is what we want. And we're just going to put a reference mark on each of these poles that'll be exactly level using the reader. So let's do it. We've got our reference mark on each pole now, and those are all level. Now's the moment of truth. We're gonna measure down from the reference mark to the concrete and see if the footing is actually level. If it is, I can just pull eight inch increments up off the concrete. If not, I will find kind of a happy medium and be a little high and a little low on the first row somewhere. So check it out. Can't believe you're doing this on camera. I know, 59. Ooh, 58 and 5 eighths. 58 and 7 eighths. And uh, straighten out there. 58 and 5 eighths. This is the pole that measured 58 and 5 eighths, which means the footing right here was the highest. And so what we're gonna do is make eight inch increments off the footing here and then check how far those increments are from our reference line and just match that on the rest of the poles, not pull eight inch increments off the footing on the other places because we want these blocks to be level, even though the footing is three eighths of an inch different overall across the whole thing. So the line closest to our reference mark is two and a half inches down from the reference mark. So that's where I'm gonna start the layout on the other poles. So you can see here, the first row is actually like eight and five sixteenths off the footing, which is fine. That's it on the speed poles. We have our lines and all we have to do is hook a string block with a string line from this line to the opposing pole at the same increment. Shoop, and we can lay block straight to that line with no corner out of block. We have our corners established. Awesome. All right, man, we'll see you. Oh my gosh. Wow, that's it, another day. Our footings are in, our speed poles are set, and that just means one thing, we have to lay block tomorrow. <laughs> so thanks for building with us today. We'll see you on the next one.